You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Random Fit. I am Wendy Batts here with my friend and co-host, Mr. Ken Miller. Ken, how are you? Good, Wendy. How's it going over there? It's going great. Um, I'm Uh, really excited about this topic because... To me, this is why we got into the profession that we did. Uh, Today, we're going to actually talk about the difference between lifespan versus health span, because there is a difference. (laughs) There is. And it's one that I wind up explaining to clients, uh, both prospective clients as well as current clients, more often than not, just from the standpoint that when we look at, you know, what the typical person comes to, let's say, to me for when it comes to personal training and strength conditioning, you talk about performance as one side, one goal, but you also have to talk about fitness and wellness goals. And then you talk about where do you want to be in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And, you know, sometimes they say, well, I, I never even thought that far. You know, I just thought, Hey, I need to lose 10 pounds because the doctor told me, or my, my blood markers weren't the way they wanted it to be. So when we talk about health span, okay, there's the immediate concern for some people, which is how's your health now? But what we want to look at is how's your health going to be with your current trajectory? Um, Because, you know, when it comes to how long people are living and how vital they want to be in life or for their family or for their friends, or if they want to be able to play golf um, and do the things that they want to do recreationally, are you going to be able to do those things later in life. So we are talking about, okay, how long we have on this earth versus how vital and integrated we're going to be in the lives of the people that we're amongst when we're, when we're later in age. So health versus lifespan is, is something that it's funny. We're talking about this now because it is a conversation I've had with more than a few clients over the last year, especially since the pandemic and shutting down and people's bodies changing and and their their health situations have been much more of a concern the last couple of years versus before. Well, and I think it's important to you you kind of did this, but if we were to actually define the differences, I think we want to think about when we think about lifespan, that's like we're talking about the time from the time you're born to the time you die. That's your lifespan. And, and we unfortunately don't always know what that end date is. And so we always say you need to live life to the fullest. And that's because it w- tomorrow is never promised. But then when we're talking about health span, it's the time that you're alive. How healthy are you? How active are you? How are you? Are you doing the things that you want to do? And it was very interesting because this past weekend um, I went to a tennis uh I guess, tournament, if you will, with our tennis team. And so we were there with 20 ladies and I realized that I was the oldest on the team. And when you think that, think that way, it was really hard because I think I act like the youngest on the team sometimes. So there were ladies that are like, we need to go to bed at this time. And I'm so tired or my body hurts. And we really have to get up and do this. And we're playing tennis for five hours because there was a bunch of lessons and then we play tournaments. And so I was ready to go, like, let's do this, you know, and I'm super competitive. So it wasn't that I was just kind of measly hitting it. I try to hit it, you know, hit it and, and kill it. So, you know, it was just interesting to know that when we talked about how old all of us were and me realizing that I am the oldest on the team, but then I felt like I acted like the youngest. That's kind of the difference between the two, because, you know, if I look at the number of my age, am I acting my age? Probably not. Um, sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. But maybe because I also had a child later in life. So I am trying to keep up with him. So I still want to act and look and feel young. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of our clients come to us and they say, listen, I want to be able to play with my grandchildren and get off the floor and not act like an quote old lady. Because when I look at the number, I'm getting ready to hit 70 or 80. You know, that to them is scary. But, you know, there is a difference. And I think we really need to define that. Yeah. And I, you know, it's funny that again, you, you're mentioning these things that I've, I've, I've been going through, uh, you know, through my own personal progression through activities and recreation and life, but I am working with a client and, you know, Kathy, she's, she's a grand grandmother of, 
of four and she's you know she's one of those that you know she had had a little bit of a scare has a little naggy achy thing here and there but she definitely wants to do the things with her her grandchildren and not just picking them up throwing them in the air and or throwing throwing a baseball or kicking a soccer ball she just wants you know if they go on a trip she just wants to be able to go on a trip and then not be tended to or slow the group down from the things that they want to do you know, if it requires going to, you know, an amusement park, being able to walk, being able to get up and down stairs, being able to get in and out of rides. That's all she wants to be able to do. And she's in her late 60s now. And that's, you know, been top of mind for her. She's put it off. Um, but, you know, her, I guess her, her little moment that made her say, you know what, I have to do something about where I am in life was, traveling across the country and just use you know picking up her luggage and getting in and out of so just functional activities of travel was laborious for her and now that she's putting that together with well if i'm going to travel with family i have to be able to do x y and z for me to be able to keep up and not be tended to um so again having that discussion with her as she sees herself in five years, 10 years, 15 years, you know, what's the trajectory? How how vital and how integrated is she going to be with her family? So she's already there. She's well beyond where we are, Wendy, when it comes to okay, <laughs> being the oldest person in the group and, and being able to hang out with the younger set. But, you know, just like you, I try to stay active. I'm trying, you know, my my kid just turned 10 and he wants to throw the ball. He wants, they want to dribble up and down the court and they want to do all these things. But, you know, the question is, is like, okay, well, do I have 10 more years uh, <laughs> in me, in my shoulder, in my hips to be able to get up, get down, run and be competitive and, and actually just have fun? Well, I think too, when, when you actually look at some of the research that's out there, when you're looking at these two differences between lifespan and health span, um, in 1919, and I, Ken, I don't know if you saw the statistic, but 1919, the average age that a person would live would be right around 56 years old. And so that kind of, kind of goes to show how much more we've grown um, in our society of understanding the importance of mental health, physical health, you know, and, and actually defining wellness. Because now that number from 1919 of 56 has risen to 79 years old. Now, again, that's some people still think that that's that's young, um, you know, and some people think, oh, gosh, 79, that's old. I think it depends on the perspective of where you are currently in your life, because to me, I'm like 79. That's a pretty good age. But I think I can go that much further. And then if you keep thinking about it now and you're looking at it, baby, as the baby boomers are aging, they're saying that the U.S. adults over 65 now is expected to live another 19 years longer then which is five times more than it was in 1950. And so, you know, when you start to put these figures and everything together, you're like, wow. And then if you keep reading about it, it was saying that, you know, um, in, in 2060, uh, the baby boomers age will outnumber children for the first time. And so I found that very interesting as well. There's going to be, you know, when people are talking about training and working and they're like trying to find their niche and they're not sure what they want to do. I always tell people to work with the active older adults, the people that want to live a healthy, healthy lifestyle and keep growing because that number is going to increase. Your business is going to continue to grow. And if you're just a fitness enthusiast, you've got a lot of time ahead of you. So if you start your fitness journey now, you can try to think about changing some of these factors that you may, you know, get in genetics. And um, I've said this before, Ken, you know this. Um, unfortunately, my family has had all different types of cancer that runs in my family. So I get screened all the time. I look at my biomarkers. I always try to, to take a healthier approach. I really work on my flexibility and mobility. So as I age, I don't fall and break a hip. I mean, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. And um, so these are all the things that you need to think about now, because years later, what you're doing today is going to change your health span and your lifespan. And so it really does go hand in hand. But, you know, I always say age is just a number. And, and that's when you're thinking about lifespan. You can't change that number. However, you can change how healthy you are throughout those numbers. Yeah. And that that um, 
that statistic about being 65 now, you can expect to live another 20 years. That's something that I've 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 actually been quoting lately to to um, my clients and the fact that hey, you've got another 20 years on this earth statistically, right? Now, my next my follow-up statement to that is how do you want to live those years, right? So do you want to be you want to be able to go out, you know, for a walk, a jog, you want to be able to pick up things, you want to be able to uh, travel, let's say your carry-on luggage, uh, you know, dra even dragging in, you know, to the airport, whatever you want to take with you, you know, do you have the functional capacity to carry the luggage, you know, hold it if it needs to be held and, and or even put things up overhead. Again, I'm using travel because that winds up being a, a hot point for a lot of people, but even things like going up the stairs, uh, going down the stairs and not being winded and gassed, you know, and having to take a break after just doing normal activities. So you've got another 20 years to look at and evaluate how you want you, the quality of what your life to be. Mm -hmm. And with, with 20 years, that's that, you know, you've lived a long life already. So now you can kind of see, okay, well, 20 years isn't like, it's not like next week. Right. It's well, not I don't know. It feels like 20 years <laughs> keeps going faster and faster. When I think about 20 years ago, I'm like, oh my goodness, I was this age, but in my mind, I still think I should have been a little bitty kid, you know? So, so it is kind of hard, I think mentally for me to grasp what my true age is. And if you're just joining us today on Random Fit, Ken Miller and myself, Wendy Batch, are talking about the differences between lifespan and health span. And, and again, I'm talking about how I don't act my age, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and, and I don't know if I should start changing my numbers. My mother did that, actually. Um, she would tell what? people that she was younger than she was. And she looked it, she acted it. Oh. And so I don't know. I always said I would never be that person. But I'm like, hmm, um, maybe it's not so bad. But you know, I'm okay with how old I am. And as I age, I'm going to own that. But, but I think that's the part that we really want to emphasize is, you know what, when we're talking about health span, it's how healthy are you? And, you know, it's good to know your measurements. You need to measure it, you know, measure it. You, once you measure it, you can see what your biomarkers are, or maybe where your cholesterol is high, what you can do to try to change your diet. If you see that your BMI is high, what can you do about your, your weight and your body mass index? You know, these different things are things that are in your control. And so that's you want to live the healthiest life that you can. Unfortunately, there are going to be people that are going to end up, you know, getting diseases that unfortunately, sometimes you you can't control. But you're not really living your best life if you're bedridden and you can't do anything on your own and someone has to take care of you. And so that's kind of the difference, because it's the life span of you just laying there doing nothing versus the health span of being active and living your life to the point where you can take care of yourself. And I think giving up that, my dad is a, a senior, you guys know that he is in his 80s and he doesn't wanna give up his independence. He doesn't wanna give up his car keys. He doesn't wanna you know, have somebody live in his house. He doesn't wanna have to go into independent living. So he has to do things daily in order to maintain his flexibility, his mobility and his balance. That's been the big one lately is balance because you know he's like, I may have, you know, one or two days left. I may have one or two years left. I may have 10 years left. Who knows? But I need to make sure that I do stuff because I don't want you to have to take care of me. And so I tell him I don't want to take care of him either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Uh, but, you know, I, I think you're bringing up a, a you know really good point when it comes to knowing what your numbers are and, and being able to understand where your, what your blood work says about you and, and understanding what your biomarkers say about you because I know more than a few guys, unfortunately, that it's like, listen, um, I, I don't, you know, I, I feel good and, you know, I don't feel bad. So, you know, I don't really need to go to the doctor. Um, and I'm not saying go for, you know, you know, head to toe workup. I'm just saying, you know, just know what your basic information is, cholesterol, blood pressure, um, all of those things to see that, hey, if, if your heart doesn't work, it doesn't matter what else is going on in your body. So understand what your numbers are. And if you're in your 40s and 50s and, and you know, you haven't done anything, you know, you just need a starting point so that when you do decide that you want to make a difference and make a change in your life for the better, 
at least you know where you are so that when you do get evaluated or you do see that doctor again, you, you know how much you've done uh, towards your goal. And if you haven't done anything, then, you know, then at least you know if what your trajectory is for the better or for the worse. But that's something that I've had to have conversations with, with more than a few people as far as, hey, you haven't had blood work done lately, you know, just, just go get it. It just, it doesn't hurt anything. You might have to, you know, give a couple of drops of blood here and there, but, you know, you need to know what changes need to be made because even if it does mean having prescribed medication for you to exercise, ultimately what you can do if possible is put your body through enough stress, make enough physiological changes for the better to where maybe eventually it does mean getting off of medication if everything else checks out, but you won't know until you get checked out. And that's one thing that I encourage, you know, guys my age, you know, in their forties and fifties, if you haven't gone in there, um, it's not just about going in when you sprained your ankle or you've got low back pain, which is why I have these conversations. It's like it's more than about your back, right? right? You need to know what your blood work looks like. Well, um, and in your yeah. annual exams, I mean, they have those for a reason. And it's like you said, that way you can see year to year, are there any major changes? Because that is a huge, you know, um, red flag. If you're, you know, had really good cholesterol one year and then in one year, 360 days you, or 365 days, you come back. And then all of a sudden, you know, your, your cholesterol is like through the roof and you haven't really changed your diet. And, you know, there are some indications that, that will allow you to know kind of where you, where you're going with your health journey. And, and if there are some other changes and, you know, can you and I were talking about this, you know, gosh, I think a month or two ago where it's like, I've got to sit down and I've got to call and make, you know, my dentist appointments. Cause you know, again, you want to have good teeth, not just because you don't want them to fall out, but your teeth, they need to be in good health because that's an indication of your heart as well. So if you guys didn't know that going to the dentist can tell you a lot about your heart <laughs> and if there's any changes there. Um, but you know, you've got your dentist, you've got, you know, your, your, um, general practitioner. So going through and getting your full scan, you know, females have to go and get, you know, um, see, see their gynecologist, you know, we've got to get mammograms. I mean, you know, you will get prostate exams. None of that is fun. None of it is fun. However, it is extremely important because when you're thinking about your health span, that is important to know, to help you know kind of your lifespan and and you start to see some red flags early you have a chance to change you know kind of your future by just knowing those numbers um and another thing too ken i know an, a common question that i get when i talk about this topic and i don't know if you you hear this but they're like well how do i know what my health span is like how do i know <laughs> I, I how do how do you answer i don't so, well, and, and, and that's just it. You can, you can kind of reflect back. Um, there's a company out there uh, called ShareCare and ShareCare does something called the real age test. And they had real age was actually its own company. It got acquired by ShareCare um, a few years ago. And what it is, is, and, and I have to do this for my medical insurance. That's how I know this much about it. So in order for me to get a lower rate, I have to take what they call the real age, age test every single year. And it is a ton of questions, everything from how tall are you? Do you know your numbers? How do you feel? You know, what, what do you do for your phys physical activity? How much water do you drink? How are you sleeping? How irritable are you? How are your finances? How is your marriage? Are you, I mean, all of these questions where if you truly sit back and you answer them realistically, not just so you get good numbers for good <laughs> for good insurance, it's interesting to see because it'll say this is your real age, meaning your real age based on how you're answering these questions and how you're feeling versus what your your true age is in your life, you know, from the time you were born to where you are today. And I found that very interesting. And again, I get a chance to do it every year. There was one year I did it where I'm like, I'm going to be 100 percent honest. And it completely changed where I dropped down two years. I'm like, ah. You know, but it but it was a wake up call because I want to know truly where I'm at, you know, and and like I said, I might feel and act a certain way, but it was it was a good indication for me to know that. And there are I'm not just saying just go and take the real age test. I'm just saying there are many, many ways that you can go on to the interwebs um, and find out these numbers by answering just different questions. That's interesting. So so it 
it calculated you to be what, 25, 24? How did you know? Yes, just then, two, two or three years younger than I truly am. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you answered honestly, then it said, okay, you're 27. Yeah, <laughs> it was truly my age, right? <laughs> So, I, you know, the one thing, um, you know, when it, when it comes to the discussion of lifespan versus health span, you know, we can't help but talk also about exercise and programming. And I, I the one thing I want to put in here and say is that, you know, everything, again, no matter where you're starting, whether you're, you're just starting an exercise routine when you're 30 or just starting your exercise routine when you're 60, because now after listening to this podcast, you're realizing man, I got another 20, 25 plus years on this earth. It, it still means you start off nice. You're not making up for lost time. And that's, that's, one, that's one thing I have to share with everybody. Is that you, you, you can't make up for the last 20 years you didn't do anything. You can't make up for the exercises you should have done because your inactivity led to high blood pressure or heart, high heart rate or high cholesterol. You still have to start off nice and easy and probably be even a little bit more cautious because you're a little older, your muscles, you know, may be a little bit dehydrated, you may have a little tightness, a little bit of overactivity, a little tension that you hold on to because you got a lot of stuff going on in your life now that you're a little older than 25, 30 years old. So you're going to have to take things easier, slower, um, be more progressive, be more conscious of, of how you progress into your, whether it's working out in a gym, home workouts, uh, getting involved with a tennis league, a bowling league, softball league, whatever the case may be. Great that you're getting started on a program, but you have to be a little bit more conscious, a little bit more deliberate in how you get started. But the real point here is just get started, right? Get started, but be conscious of how you start and your progressions as you get into your newer exercise routine. Yes, you've got another 20 years, and no, you cannot make up for the last 20 that you weren't doing exactly what you could have done to have, you know, be at that point of strength and power and stability um, if you had done it, you know, 20, 30 years ago. But, you know, you can't you can't make up for lost time, but you, you can be um, deliberate, get some guidance and progress the way you should progress when it comes to making positive changes while addressing the risk of injury when it comes to doing, you know, possibly too much. Yeah. And there are ways to change it. You know, like I've, I've talked about a client of mine that came in, she had osteopenia. She did, she hadn't really worked out. And then she ended up, you know, two years later being one of my strongest clients, my most ripped client, if you will. And her osteopenia numbers completely changed to where she was out of, out of the high range. And so there are so many positive ways of, of changing what you're doing today, you know, even if you get some, some bad news and, you know, to your point, you need to be very smart with what you're doing. That is when you would probably go seek a personal trainer, a certified personal trainer, hopefully through NASM. Uh, but, but it's also important to, to, if you don't know what you're doing to work with people that do uh, work with a, a nutritionist, if you need help with, you know, your diet and those of us that are making changes may become irritable if they change their diet producer, Eric. Um, and, but the thing is, is you're going to start feeling better. And then that's going to end up being a, a journey where you're going to want to continue doing these positive things. It's just getting started. And I think that's what we, we really wanted to, to stress on this today was don't look at your number. Think about when you wake up in the morning, how do you feel? If you're creaking and you're achy and things hurt and that's not normal and that's not how it's always been in your life, you can make a positive change that will change your health span. And it's never too late to start. You just may have to get clearance if you haven't done something. Know what your markers are of where to begin. And notice, you know, when you say, I feel younger or I feel older, which direction are you talking about? And then what are you going to do to make those changes? And I think that's that was kind of my key point of, of wanting to emphasize. I don't feel like I am my true age. <laughs> yeah. And, and I yeah. hope I never do. You know, that's that's it. Yeah. And and I think, you know, everybody has their own starting point. Uh, I think to, to put it a little bit differently, everybody's got their own starting point, whether it's now, uh, 20 years ago, or even somebody had, you know, achieved, you know, remarkable, you know, accomplishments in their younger years. 
um, and versus somebody who was hitting the books and and you know just doing more sedentary things in their life. It's everybody's got a different starting point. We've got to respect that, honor it, um, accept it, embrace it, however you want to uh, look at it. But only from there can we make those changes. And you know when it comes to you know lifespan versus health span, we're not just talking. I know a lot of this conversation has been just about okay if you're in your if you're in your 40s and 50s or even your 60s it's never too late to to start because you you've got more time than you think statistically but i think to talk to the younger set it's it's you know in your 20s and things are about cosmetics and lean body mass and muscle showing and having having a body that you can just take off your shirt and you know and spring break and go to the beach during the summer um, there are other things that do go into the equation when it comes to, okay, how are you going to be later in life? And that's more than just lifting heavy and doing cardio. It is about the mental aspect. Are you relaxing? Are you paying attention to um, recovery? Are you doing, are you meditating? Are you doing breathing exercises? Things that are more internal than they are what we might perceive externally. So looking at the whole mind body and what we would really consider to be a true definition of health versus versus cosmetics right or aesthetically how you look so if you're in your 20s and 30s and this is your primary goal just know that there's a bigger other pieces to the puzzle when it comes to living a long and healthy life yeah so and i think i think you know ken too to that point everyone defines health differently and it's really you know and i think you just need to know what your definition of health is and so sometimes writing it out thinking it through because Somebody said, well, what's, you know, what is health? Well, I mean, I have my definition. Can you have your definition? But that doesn't mean that they're the same. And am I talking about my personal life or just health in general or what the doctors and MDs think health is? So I think it's understanding what you think is health, understanding where your numbers are, and then seeing, do those correlate with each other? And if not, make those changes. So just want to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. And again, it, you know, the whole reason for this podcast is that statistically, those those numbers that you read off earlier, Wendy, is just we, we have a little bit more time than we think. And I think the bigger. Oh, no. Yeah. Is is how do you want to spend that time? Um, you know, do you want to be vital? Do you or do you just want to kind of cruise along how with how things have been? So, Wendy, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing your insights on lifespan versus health span. So for those of you listening to us here, both Wendy Batts and I, Ken Miller, on Random Fit, um, please like, follow, subscribe, download, share, and more importantly, comment. Let us know if there's anything else that you would want us to talk about regarding Random Fit. So until next time, everybody, take care and be well.